Today we stand here to acknowledge and memorialize the important steps that were taken by Freedom House members over 40 years ago. It was at the height of the civil rights era. So take your mind back a little bit here and think about the time of the social and civil unrest where many clearly were focused on staying safe and that was the one thing on their mind. Yet Freedom House workers and members did more than that than just survive. They blazed new trails for generations to follow. They established a program that would flourish in their community and become a model for the entire country. Their story is an inspiration for the EMS Academy youth and our community at large. It was fate that our department learned of their history and their journey just a few months ago. There was an instant bond between the programs that was just simply undeniable. We're proud to have them here today to recognize their legacy. The renaming of the building, along with the plaques that will serve as a daily reminder to our youth and community of the historical contributions that were made by African American communities will be here for years to come. But more than that, the renaming of the plaques will serve as an inspiration for our youth be to become the leaders that they all have the potential to be. Ladies and gentlemen, we have this morning a series of speakers that will be able to share further information about the program with you this morning. We'll begin by welcoming uh, Tim Butler, our St. Paul Fire Chief. The significance of this building is very important to him, to our department, and the departments that we share together. Because it serves as a training site for the academy on a daily basis. The academy site and the training facilities here are made possible through the support of Chief Tim Butler. Please help me welcome Chief, Chief Butler. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Fire Station 51. The station was built in 1965 and was con in continuous operation until the spring of 2010. In the summer of 2010, a dedicated group of volunteers from Ember Hills Community College, the City of St. Paul, the St. Paul Fire Department, transformed this old firehouse into a unique learning center for emergency medicine. The firefighters' dormitory was converted into a practical skills area. The lounge was converted into a classroom, and the ambulance bays and watch offices were kept in service to support ambulance operation courses. I think it's ironic that a station that never actually housed an ambulance while in active commission is now houses a truly unique and inspiring EMS training academy. The EMS Academy and the Freedom House Ambulance Service share a kindred pioneering spirit, the spirit of sacrifice and service, of building hope and creating a brighter future for the community. In 1974, the St. Paul Fire Department became the very first paramedic ambulance service in the state of Minnesota. It's a great pleasure and honor for me today and my department to welcome Mr. George McCary, Mr. Walt Brown, and Ms. Darnella Wilson, some of the founding members of Freedom House Ambulance, the nation's first paramedic ambulance service. Ms. Darnella Wilson, the first female paramedic in the city of Pittsburgh started as a Freedom House medic and then spent 30 plus years as a paramedic in Pittsburgh EMS. She will uh, formally open today's ceremony by singing our national anthem. So if you'll come up. Our nation's colors will be presented by Local 21's Color Guard, the International Association of Firefighters. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the posting of colors and for our national anthem. Last gleaming 
whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star Um, it's truly an honor to present this proclamation, but it's also an honor to stand before you here today and recognize some important history and some great work. You'll hear a lot this morning and throughout the day about the Freedom House Ambulance Service, as I've had the opportunity to learn more about this in the last couple of weeks. Um, I, I'm once, uh, once again reminded that history matters. Freedom House represents yet another example of innovation, innovation and self-determination in our communities of color that tends to often get overlooked. In fact, I have to tell you that in researching this over the last couple of weeks, I had no idea that Freedom House, in fact, was an innovation rooted in the African-American community, something that is the basis of one of the, 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 the core services that are provided in our community. I had no idea, I didn't know that history Somehow that didn't get into my textbooks. They missed that. It's a powerful story and a powerful reality that demands recognition. History matters. Now, we all know that history is full of good ideas and bad ideas. History gets made in all sorts of ways. But as we're seeing today in this case, that history has been made is also in a history that is a very good idea. The simple notion that a dedicated and effective emergency response function can be combined with a training opportunity, a meaningful training opportunity for the disenfranchised. That idea was so good that St. Paul's EMS Academy was very much modeled after it. Later today, we'll celebrate the fifth class graduating from the EMS Academy, bringing our total to over 70 graduates. Vast majority of those graduates are staying in the healthcare field with decent wages, opportunities for growth, and an incredible opportunity to contribute to the city as a whole. History matters, and so do good ideas. So today we have an opportunity to bring both visibility and the history to the history behind Freedom House, but also to celebrate the replication of this model through the EMS Academy. Before I read the proclamation, I do want to say thank you on behalf of the mayor and the city to some very important folks. I too want to thank George, Walter, and Darnella for attending today, to coming for, for coming all the way from Pittsburgh to join us. It's an honor to have us to have you here with us today. I also want to thank Luz Frias for her tremendous visionary work to put the EMS Academy together, uh, to the staff of Hero, to the fire department, to Chief Butler for making this a reality, Inver Hills Community College, Community Action of Ramsey and Washington Counties, all of our funding partners for helping to create this and to really make this a sustainable reality. I also want to thank Firefighters United for their work and their outstanding commitment to the EMS Academy, to the NAACP for their support of this, of this effort, and particularly to Brother Nathaniel Kalik for his work throughout the city of St. Paul and to this entire community. He is a true hero and the essence of what it means to be a citizen. So with that, I'd like to present this proclamation. If you can bear with me. Whereas for over 40 years, the world and nation have benefited from the rich legacy of Freedom House Ambulance Service, which between 1967 and 1975 pioneered and launched the field of emergency medical services. 
And whereas not only did the Freedom House Ambulance Service catalyze the development of pre-hospital care, but also created employment opportunities for community members facing marginalization and discrimination. And whereas prior to its sudden closure by the city of Pittsburgh in 1975, the Freedom House Ambulance Service became one of the greatest chapters in our nation's history and a shining example of the American values of self-determination, scientific innovation, and service to society. And whereas the city of St. Paul strives to uphold the legacy of Freedom House through its support of the St. Paul EMS Academy, a nationally recognized emergency medical technician certification program for underrepresented young adults. Now therefore, I, Christopher B. Coleman, Mayor of the City of St. Paul, do hereby proclaim Monday, April 16th, 2012 to be Freedom House Ambulance Day in the City of St. Paul. Thank you so much. She's doing a lot of acknowledging other people, but can we give a round of applause for Luce, who has been just <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I could not begin to tell you the number of cool things in this city that have started with Luce Frias telling somebody, I've got a cool idea. <laughs> Um, and I've come to know that when I get that phone call to just sort of stop everything and listen because uh, invariably it, it certainly is a cool idea. Uh, she is moving on uh, soon and uh, we're going to uh, really miss uh, her leadership here in the city of St. Paul. Uh, but not too much because we'll still require her leadership here in the city of St. Paul. <laughs> um, this is a, a phenomenal day to me, you know, when, when we started this whole thing, or when Luce started this whole thing, when, when all of the kind of folks who, who work on this, uh, uh, you know, one of the functions of being in politics and being an elected official is uh, you get a lot of uh, credit for stuff you only worked on a little bit, and you get a lot of blame for stuff that you really didn't do anyways, but um, I'm not the one who did the hard work. You know, the folks in the room, you know, who've done really the hard work behind all this stuff. But when the idea first came forward, you know, it was this real simple concept that if we really want to promote safety in our communities, then we need folks, you know, in these vehicles, we need folks showing up on the scene who really understand these communities, who really know, uh, you know, what's right, <laughs> you know, to be able to walk in and quickly assess what's wrong, who can walk in and, and, and communicate directly um, whether that's based on a common language, common understanding, common culture, common background, whatever it is, you know, that, that, and recognizing that there's a direct connection between our ability to field uh, a diverse uh, uh, field of, of first responders uh, and our ability to deliver first-rate uh, public safety services in a city as, as diverse as St. Paul. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's been with like a lot of joy, I think, that a lot of us have watched uh, today now five EMS academies graduate. Uh, and to see this, which is our largest class yet, I mean, is, is, is really phenomenal. And all the people who have been a part of that work, you know, you just, you know, I, I was going to say you deserve a pat on the back, but you deserve a bonus. Mr. Deputy Mayor? <laughs> Mr. Deputy Mayor, can we get on that? <laughs> um, you know, there's nobody, I think, who embodies that spirit. Not just the entrepreneurial spirit, not just the pioneering spirit, but the real spirit of service, right? Nobody that embodies that more than the story of Freedom House, you know? Uh, and as we've looked into that, it, it, it too escaped my textbook as well. Um, but as we look into that story and see people who, you know, really saw a, a hole, really saw a need, uh, in their community uh, and, and, and saw fit to step forward and fill that need and say, you know what, if not us, then who? <laughs> you know, if not now, then when, you know? And, and so I'm honored as we should all be by Mr. McCary, Mr. Brown, Ms. Wilson, uh, your, your service uh, and also your presence uh, here today to come all the way to St. Paul to participate in this celebration with us. Uh, it, it, it really means a lot. Um, each year I get the honor of, of speaking briefly at the uh, EMS Academy, um, and, I, and I try to do my best to kind of impart on our graduates uh, the fact that what you carry is so much more than just a simple responsibility to yourself, you know. 
and the opportunity that you've been given through this, you know, uh, involves a responsibility to all of the graduates of the EMS Academy who have come before you. Uh, it involves a responsibility to all the graduates who we intend to bring through this program after you. It, was, it involves a responsibility to all the people who have funded this, all the people who, uh, in, in our city, who rely on our high quality services, and it certainly involves a responsibility to the pioneers uh, who sit in this front row today. Thank you so much for your service, and thank you so much for your service. Thanks, everybody, for being here. More than 30 years ago, a group of individuals saw a need in their community, and from that need, the Freedom House Ambulance Service was born. This idea would become so much more than they could have ever imagined. Today, we are here to recognize and honor these men and women. I have no doubt that we can never really know all the many difficulties that these men and women faced. Now, let's fast forward to 2009, where in St. Paul, Minnesota, and uh, audacious and improbable experiment is now taking place. It's called the EMS Academy. And like the Freedom House, there was plenty of resistance and many naysayers. And also, like the Freedom House, the individuals behind the EMS Academy saw a need in this community. Where most people just talk, these people actually do. Louis Frias, Dave Page, Fire Chief Butler, Terry Haldner, and City Council Member Melvin Carter had a vision that would become a reality. And like the Freedom House members, the MS Academy will someday be so much more than what they could ever possibly imagine. Changing people's lives in this community for the better. Becoming a model for other cities around the country. It gives me great pride that we now have our own place in history and our own Freedom House. I hope this house serves as a reminder to future generations for what a dedicated few can accomplish. Lastly, I would like to take a second to acknowledge and thank Terrence Steinberg for, from the EMS Academy Program Assistant uh, for discovering this history and bringing it to us here in St. Paul. Thank you. The Fire Department of St. Paul is one that has really moved towards accepting and promoting diversity within a department. It's not an easy task, we, we all know that. There are diversity issues regarding gender, there are diversity issues regarding language, and diversity issues regarding race. But the way we approach that is to go head on and partner with other individuals in the community and other organizations to have an, an academy and a program such that we have. And it's with that partnership that I'm really thankful for uh, with Chief Tim Butler that I'd like to welcome it at this point. As Lou said, it isn't easy uh, growing a diverse crop of uh, EMS uh, people, and I use the word crop because it's kind of like farming. You got to put the seed in the ground, you got to water it, you got to tend it, you got to care for it, and ultimately someday you'll get results. And I'm seeing the results today, uh, and it's kind of like a pyramid scheme. We're going to teach you, you're going to teach others, they're going to teach others. Think of the lives that you're going to save. I don't know what history books people read. I read a lot of history books about the fire department and EMS. I didn't hear this story in the history books either. I think we're gonna rewrite some of that history and recognize that here today. Um, to formally recognize the pioneering spirit done by the members of Freedom House Ambulance Service and the indelible mark they left on the nation's EMS service and also to memorialize today's proclamation of Freedom House Ambulance Day the fire department is officially renaming this fire station Freedom House Station 51. In addition, the city, Inver Hills Community College, McAllister College, and a number of other uh, private and public uh, partners are installing two plaques to mark the occasion. The cherry plaque that you see in front of you will be uh, installed right outside the watch office door for everyone to come in the main entrance of the building. They'll see this plaque. And that plaque will read, Freedom House Station 51, the Freedom House Ambulance Service of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, pioneered the emergency medical services profession and launched the first ambulance service in the country from 1967 to 1975. 
as inaugural employees, George McCary III, Walter Brown Jr., and Darnella Wilson face racial tension and resistance in their line of duty. They demonstrated courage by withstanding the daily hostilities and providing life-saving efforts for the broader community. On this day, the City of St. Paul honors their achievements and personal sacrifice by proclaiming April 16, 2012 to be known as Freedom House Ambulance Day, April 16, 2012, and it will contain the names Walter Brown Jr., Darnella Wilson, and George McCary III. In addition, the outside of the station will have a plaque installed right outside the main entrance. That's the aluminized plaque you see here, and it says Freedom House Station 51. In recognition of the innovation and dedication of the Freedom House Ambulance Service, the St. Paul Fire Department hereby recommissions this station, home of the EMS Academy, as Freedom House Station 51. Freedom House Ambulance Service of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania launched in advance the first modern ambulance service in the country from 1967 to 1975. The St. Paul EMS Academy aspires to continue the Freedom House tradition of providing opportunities for all individuals, advance the emergency medical services profession, and include providers of diverse ethnicity, cultures, and language abilities. It's marked with the Freedom House Ambulance logo and the St. Paul Fire Department logo, and it's dated April 16th, 2012. I really congratulate you for your ability to have went through what you went through to get this far. And for me to come up here to see you was a pleasure, I guarantee it. I'll take this memory for a long time. And to know that you will be some of the American heroes, because every time that you go out on the call, you're gonna help somebody preserve their life for a longer period. Just, just your experience, it's gonna give families joy because you showed up and on time. You know, this, this has been one of the, 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 the proudest moments that I've had uh, to celebrate the Freedom House and to have Freedom House name on a building in Minnesota is really a proud, proud moment for me. Uh, being uh, as to when I started, not to have the frame of mind to be a paramedic. It was one of those things that uh, came about through association with Walter Brown he was one of my mentors to, to, pull me, to pull me through. And in doing so, he gave me the ability to have, uh, I gotta say vision, because you know, you know, when you see certain things, you automatically respond. And that's by being a first responder. And once again, I'm, I'm so proud to, to have vision to see each and every one of you and to have the audience out here to celebrate with you. And it's, uh, it's, it's got me overwhelmed, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm stuttered for words. Generally, I have more words, but I'm stuttered for words. But I must say, I'm proud to have this moment to say thank you for your first responder and everyone else. One of the other partnerships that I can't begin to not acknowledge this morning, I know he's been acknowledged already by Deputy Mayor Williams, but uh, former president of NAACP, Nathaniel Kalik, is here with us this morning. And the NAACP, under his leadership can, and there, thereafter, continues to be an incredible partner. And please help me just welcome Nathaniel Kalik to our presence this morning. Thank you. Take a minute to look around you. Look at these bricks, please. 
It's really important, actually. These bricks are uh, they're beautiful. They were painted over the last week uh, by volunteers in this very class. Um, scrubbed, cleaned, um, just the same as that bunk room, just the same as all the pieces of this uh, firehouse that have really been uh, converted. So uh, it's really special. Uh, but the bricks here today, it, that's, that's what we're here to celebrate, is these bricks. Um, renaming the, the building, this building, Freedom House, uh, is, is one of the best days of my career, I have to tell you. It is a, a, a tribute to honor the men and women who were the first paramedics in our country. But um, more, than that, more than that, more than being first, they really were doing things that were on the cutting edge. These men and women were pioneers in a new way of training ambulance drivers at the time. They were pioneers in forging new relations with law enforcement and hospital staff. Some of them weren't even allowed into some of the wards where they were doing training. Some of them weren't allowed to enter the homes in which people had called for help. All of this at a time when our country had barely legalized their right to vote. I want you to think back to 1965, 1966, and then 1967 when Freedom House was born. At a time when systematic racial discrimination was overt, where the color of their skin defined and restricted nearly every aspect of their freedom. Have things changed today? In emergency medical services, do people of diverse backgrounds get equal opportunity? Do our ethnically diverse patients, especially those who speak different languages, receive equal treatment? Look at these walls. Within these walls is an oasis where hope can be born and dreams can start to grow. These walls provide shelter they provide shelter for the harsh injustices that our inner city youth face every day. For a few hours each day, they come to class and they can forget their economic challenges, the bigotry and the racism that surrounds our culture. How will I find food to put on the table for my children? How will I care for the sick and, and injured family members in my family? How will I avoid getting in trouble with the police and getting sucked into a life with gangs and drugs all around me? How will I get enough sleep and where will I sleep tonight? Those are the thoughts that they have. These challenges crush many of our youth. And many of the students that step through these walls don't make it through because of those very reasons. Why is Ebony not here today? <laughs> the work that happens every day in this facility is nothing short of a miracle. The same kind of hard work, true grit, dedication that every day was required of those Freedom House members. Within these walls, our students get the protection and resources they need to begin to dream. Dream of a new future as EMTs and paramedics. This is a dream they're having when they're fully awake, conscious, alert, oriented. <laughs> a dream they work tremendously hard to achieve sometimes without breakfast, that requires confidence to break free of the limits that our culture and our system has sometimes imposed on them. It is a great day indeed to come to work in this building and to, to know that it has a sign that has been named after people like Walt, George, and Darnella, that's, that's an honor. 
To think of the word freedom listed on this wall. Freedom from apathy, from hopelessness, freedom from bigotry, freedom from oppression, freedom to dream, freedom to succeed. I come from Mexico. In my culture, we say, mi casa es tu casa. Walt, Darnella, George, it is my pledge that we will work as hard as we can to honor those after whom this Freedom House building has been renamed, to continue the work that you started so that students who step into this house will be truly free and soar to heights that none of us could ever imagine. Thank you. God bless you. talking about when I talk about his energy and his passion. It, it just resonates uh, through, through and through in everything that he does. I just want to thank everyone for coming this morning and making a part of history in St. Paul. I want to thank all those who helped put the event together and having it look as beautiful as it does, as, as a bay in the fire station can look through the hard work and the painting that occurred in the last couple of days. I think as recent as yesterday, folks were still watching the paint dry on these walls. Uh, but more importantly, I also want to thank the folks in my department who just attended to every single detail you can imagine uh, to make sure that all the I's were dotted and, and T's were crossed and handle the arrangements for our visitors and things of that sort. So I want to particularly acknowledge two individuals here in the back of the room, Terrence Steinberg and Ruben Vasquez. Please raise your hand. With nothing more, please uh, stick around for a couple of minutes, uh, enjoy some of the refreshments that are here, have some time to meet with our guests and share your experiences with them and take some photos with this incredible vehicle that we have here and uh, just enjoy. Thank you for coming.